My darling? Oh, that's Linda. Linda Larch. Her father was head groom here in the old days. Karen, darling, this is Mrs. Pardo. She's been our housekeeper here since I was a child. How do you do, Mrs. Pardo? Mrs. Masterson. Did you have a pleasant journey? Yes, lovely, thank you. We had a terrible journey. The plane was an hour late taking off. Well, you're safely home now. We've had the West Wing bedroom redecorated as you instructed, sir. I think you'll find it satisfactory. I'm sure we shall. We'll go straight up, I think. Karen, darling? I've never slept in a four-poster before. You'll get used to it. Mrs. Pardo will show you how everything works. I don't think she liked me. Oh, of course she liked you. And you're like her. She's amazing. Runs the place like clockwork. You won't have a thing to do. But I want to. I want to help you. I know, my darling, I know. And so you shall. Look, I've got to go down to the farm office for a bit. Will you be all right? Mrs. Pardo will help you unpack. Can't I come with you? I'd love to see the farm. Another time. See you later. Ian. Yeah. Give me a proper kiss. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you. And I'm not going to sit around doing nothing all day, so there. Of course not. I wouldn't want you to. Good. Come in. Ah, Mrs. Pardo. Mr. Williams has brought up the luggage, sir. Good. Let him bring it in. I'm just off. Bring the cases in, please, Mr. Williams. Would you like me to show Mrs. Marcus and the other room, sir? Yes, would you? Thank you, Williams. See you at dinner, darling. Uh, put them down over there, please. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. You'll be tired, I shouldn't wonder. Why don't you lie down for a while? I can look after this. Oh, oh, that's very kind of you, but it really, was a I... great surprise to us when Mr. Ian got married again. And so far away. But you've been living in New York for long. Yes, two years. I was working there. Oh, yes. Of course, uh, we all hoped he'd have the wedding here, but uh, I suppose with it happening so quickly... Yes, it was rather sudden. Uh, but it, Mr Masterson wanted it that way. Yes. It's good to see him looking so well after what he's been through. You look a bit pale, my dear, but then I suppose you prefer to keep out of the sun. I've never been to the West Indies, of course, but they say it's very nice. Tell Karen that she'll have to learn to ride. You can teach her, Linda. Oh, I'd love to. Have you ridden before? No. Splendid. Then you won't have picked up any bad habits. We can start from scratch. I'm not sure I'll be very much good. Oh. Don't worry about that, darling. Linda's a marvellous teacher. All her pupils win prizes. Shut up, Ian. <laughs> You'll frighten the poor girl. If I were you, Mrs. Masterson, I should have nothing to do with horses. Dangerous, temperamental creatures. Duncan. My wife finds it hard to believe, but there are some of us who just aren't interested in the animals. Well, of course, Karen doesn't have to learn to ride if she doesn't want to. I'd love to. It's just that I... I know. We'll take it gently at first, I promise. You'll be awfully out of it round here if you don't ride. Ian, stop it. You're not to bully her. Was I? Dear me. I say, darling, are you going to pour our guests some coffee? Oh, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Who are you? What are you doing here? My name is Paul. I believe I'm your stepson. Paul? Ian, your father said that you weren't coming back till next week. Change of plan. I arrived this morning. 
There was no one about. Oh, they were so at I... the cricket match. I had a headache, so I came home early. You're Karen? Yes. You're younger than I thought you'd be, and prettier. Thank you. What do you think of all this? Well, it's beautiful. Yes, the stately homes of England, how beautiful they stand to prove the upper classes have still the upper hand. They don't, of course, wear the last relic of a dying breed. In ten years or so, this place will be a home for battered wives run by the county council. He's all right, really. When I look at some of the youngsters these days, Paul seems amazingly sensible. A bit bookish, perhaps. God knows where he gets that from. His mother never read a book in her life. What's he studying at university? History. I say, darling, are you nearly ready? We don't want to be late. I suppose he'll resent me at first. Nonsense. Why should he? I don't know. The usual stepmother thing. Well, that's just damn silly. Darling, you really must stop imagining that people are against you. First it was Mrs. Pardo. Now Paul. I'm sorry, darling, but I can't help feeling as if I'm not welcome here. It's somehow as if this place didn't like me. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yes, I knew you'd laugh. I've never heard anything so ridiculous. How can a place not like you? I don't know, but I, I just feel that. Look, I can see that we're going to have to get you more involved in the life down here. Give you something to do. Then you won't have time to brood. That's exactly what I want. Why can't I help you down at the farm? I'm good at booking. When do you start your writing with Linda? But tomorrow, but if good. that's... Well, that'll keep you going for a while. Yes. keep on my father's house after he died. Well, it suits me wonderfully well, of course. And Duncan prefers to live in the country and drive into his boring dental surgery every day. Oh, oh, Karen. Are you all right? Yes. I'm sorry, I, I suddenly felt faint. I don't know. You've gone quite pale. Look, I'm going to take you up to the house give you a stiff drink, and then I'll drive you home. Perhaps you tried to do too much for a first lesson. I've tired you out. There. That's better. You'll be able to rest now. I'll tell Mr. Ian when he comes in. Mrs. Pardo. Yes, dear. How long has Linda lived here? Oh, she's been on the estate for the best part of 30 years. She was only a child when old Newton, that's her father, first came here. She's nice, isn't she? She's a good lass. Don't much care for that husband of hers with his airs and graces. Gives her a hard time, too, by all accounts. What do you mean? Well, it's not my place to repeat things, but they say that he drinks. Not that I've ever seen anything, mind, uh, except just once or twice, Miss Linda... <laughs> well, I don't want to tell tales out of school. Well, go on, Mrs. Pardo. I've seen her some mornings when her eyes have been red with weeping. Of course, she won't ever say a word against him. She's very loyal. There. That's better. Now, just lie back and go to sleep. There's nothing to worry about, my dear. I'll look after everything. off the road. How long have you been here? I don't know. There was a cart. A man in a cart coming round the corner. I couldn't see. Oh, Duncan, have I wrecked the car? Well, I don't think it's too bad, but you certainly can't drive home. Come on, let me help you out. All right. Oh, what's the time? 
About five. Oh, good God. I must have been out about half an hour. Half an hour? Well, that's extraordinary. I can't have been the first person to pass you. Why didn't anybody do anything? I don't know. Duncan, I've just remembered. What? The man. The man driving the cart. He was laughing. Are you sure? Yes, as I swerved to avoid hitting him, I saw him. Just for a moment. Before I skidded into the bank. He was laughing. Well, I expect you imagined it. What's more to the point is, where is he? Why didn't he go for help? You're less than a mile out of Long Stanton. Can't have taken him half an hour to get there and back. You're being silly, darling. The doctor gave you a clean bill of health. There's nothing wrong with you. Well, maybe we should get a second opinion. If you like. But old Phipps is first rate. He's looked after our family for years. It's ever since I fainted that time up at the stables. I feel so tired all the time. I can't understand it. You're sleeping all right, aren't you? Yes. Ian, am I a disappointment to you? Don't be ridiculous. Well, I keep imagining the strangest things. What are you talking about? It's difficult to explain, but... I feel as if there's someone here or something that wishes me ill. Oh, no, not that again. How did Hilary die? Huh? Your first wife. You've never told me. She was killed in a car crash. It was a stupid accident. Nobody's fault, really. A farmer from the other side of Longstone. A farmer? With a cart? No. He was driving a tractor, actually. But I don't see what that's got yes, to do. Yes, but Ian, a car accident? Don't you see? I had a car accident, too. There is something... Oh, Karen, for God's sake, pull yourself together. You're behaving like a silly little girl. Hello, you two. Quarrelling again? No, we were not quarrelling. I was explaining to your stepmother. Don't use that word, Pa. Karen hates it. Oh. Does she? Well, I'm sorry. It has unhappy associations. All those wicked stepmothers in fairy tales. And you're not in the least wicked, are you, Karen? Quite the reverse, I'd say. Don't talk to Karen like that. Sorry, Pa. And if you're planning to join us for dinner, perhaps you'll be good enough to put on a jacket. Anything you say. Oh, Karen, we'll go in. He's an odd boy, a bit of a loner. He was very close to his mother, and when she died, he took it badly. I'm afraid he's never got on very well with Ian. I like him. But he seems to avoid me. Oh, he's all right. A bit spooky. Spooky? Well, all that black magic stuff. I don't understand it, really, but he has all sorts of books of ancient folklore. Old country spells, that sort of thing. Apparently, there used to be a lot of it around here. Paul has books of spells? Yes. I'm sure he'd lend them to you if you're interested. What's the matter? Nothing. Karen, oh, my dear, what is it? Linda, do you promise not to laugh at me? Why should I laugh at you? Well, I know Ian thinks I'm imagining things, but... Do you remember that time I fainted up here at the stables? Yes. Well, ever since then, I've felt strange. It's not exactly ill, but... It, it's as if I can't make my body do what I want it to do. Well, not without the most tremendous effort. When I went to the doctor, he said that there was nothing physically wrong with me. And then I was walking in the park one day... You know, the long walk by the lake. Yes. And I heard a child crying. I looked everywhere. Nothing. And, and when I asked Ian, he said that there were no children on the estate. He said that I was imagining it, but Linda, I heard it. I know I did. Probably one of the local kids got into the garden somehow. No, 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 you don't understand. It was a warning. A child was trying to warn me. Linda, you've got to help me. Can't you see what it is? It's a spell. I mean, I, I couldn't understand at first why I felt so unwanted here. And then just now when you told me about Paul's books, everything made sense. There is an evil spirit in this place that wants to get rid of me. Look, Karen, I'm sure that what you thought... Linda, you please regardless. help me. I'm desperate. I haven't got anybody oh, else I can right. ask. Karen, it's all right. Of course I'll help you. <laughs> to be frightened of. Probably what you heard was just some silly trick. Now, come on. <laughs> Dry your eyes. 
There's a good girl. I know this is where he keeps his books. Well, there may be some more in his room. I can't find anything. Now, there's a lot here about witchcraft in the 16th century, but that's all historical. I can't believe Paul would do such a thing, however much he may dislike him. It doesn't have to be him. It could be a, a curse on the house or something like that. Are there any books on the history of this place? I don't know of any. Linda? Mm -hmm. What was she like? Hilary, Ian's first wife. She was all right. A bit bossy. Very possessive. Kept poor old Ian on the tight rein. Was she beautiful? Yes. I expect she... she loved all this. Passionately. I don't think she cared about anything else, really. Oh, I see what you mean. You think Hillary? Let's get out of here. I suddenly feel cold. Oh, Linda, what am I going to do? She used to say... she couldn't bear to be away from this place. Come on. What do you want me to do? I've been perfectly polite to her. I can't help it if she won't talk to me. She thinks you don't like her. That's silly. Damn it, at least you might make the effort to get to know her. I've done my best, but she's such a little mouse. Don't talk about Karen like that. Well, she is. God knows why you married her. She has no idea of how to cope with a big house. That's not the point. And in any case... Poor Dad. All you ever wanted was a wife who'd do the gracious lady of the man a bit. First you gave Mama, who couldn't be bothered, and now Karen, who hardly dares put her nose outside the door. You should have married Linda. I told you so at the time, if you remember. Oh, shut up. For God's sake, shut up. Prince of darkness, I make me a sign. Now let mine enemy peek and pine. May he be filled with teen and woe. Death in the morning shall he know. Back. How the hell should I know? Stupid bitch never tells me where she's going. I thought she was up at the house with you. No. Perhaps she's keeping company with our Lord and Master. Why don't you sit down and make yourself at home? I'll get you a drink. No. No, thank you. I'm sorry to bother you, but I think I'd better go. Karen, wait a minute. Don't go. Talk to me. should be friends, you and I. The way things are. Oh, I, I know I'm a bit drunk oh, tonight. Duncan, not, what's please. the matter? Don't you like me? Has she been putting down the poison well, I don't again? I what you mean. Linda's never said anything to me. No? Didn't she tell you that I'm a drunk? Sometimes I beat her up. Stop it. Linda's been wonderful to me. She's the only friend I've got here. Oh, you little fool. Can't you see what's going on? She hates you. She always has. She wouldn't care if you were dead.
In the month of October, the woman Pickworth was brought before me accused of witchcraft and the making of spells. She denied it heartily and cried out that she was the victim of another's malice. She had written the name of her enemy on a piece of paper and placed it in an empty drawer, she said, so that the spell laid upon her should return against that person from whom it had come. Thank God. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. What's happened? You haven't heard? No, I suppose. With Linda. She's had the most terrible accident. She was thrown from her horse in the park this morning. She was dead before they could get her to hospital. Dead? One of the lads found her. They took her to the farm office. She was barely conscious. I must telephone Duncan. I've spoken to Mrs. Pardo and Williams. Would you like me to drive you in? Thanks, Paul. In a moment. I can't understand it. She was such a brilliant horsewoman. I'm sorry, darling. I, I rather blurted it out. I didn't think. I know you were fond of Linda. Yes, I was. I must telephone. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, I'm all right. Poor old Linda. What an awful thing. I think this belongs to you. What? Oh, yes, it's one of my old exercise books. How on earth did you get hold of it? It was left in my room. In your room? Yes. Well, that's funny. I, I lent it to Linda a month or so ago. I know. It has all my notes about witchcraft in this part of the world during the 18th and 19th centuries. She said she was making a study of the subject. Odd, really. It's not the sort of thing you'd have thought she'd be interested in. No. Well, thanks, anyway. Perhaps she was going to give it back to me and left it in your room by mistake. Yes. I expect it was something like that. Poor old Linda. Yes. Poor old Linda. <laughs> <laughs> 